Hi, welcome to this Corporate Maths video on misleading graphs. Sometimes in maths we're asked to draw bar charts, line graphs, pie charts, or scatter graphs. But other times in maths we may be given one of these graphs and we may be asked to explain why it's misleading or to write down some criticisms of a graph that's been drawn for us. That's a really useful skill, particularly if you're looking at graphs or charts in the newspapers or in the media or you know part of your coursework and assignment at university. It's important to be able to look at it and make sure that it's not misleading either by an accident or even on purpose. So let's have a look at bar charts, line graphs, pie charts and scatter graphs and look at some of the common reasons to how they can be misleading. And these are just some examples, but they're some of the common ones. Okay, let's have a look at bar charts. So here we've got a bar chart, and we've got our colors here, black, blue, green, pink, and orange. I don't know, this could be colors of cars in a car park, colors of people's hair, I don't know. Um, and you've got your frequency, three, seven, four, six, and one. And here's a bar chart that's been drawn for. Now, as I've drawn this bar chart intentionally wrong. I've made some mistakes on it on purpose. And some of the mistakes on this bar chart are things to watch out for whenever you're asked to criticize or explain why a graph can be misleading. So first of all, if you have a look at our bars, we've got our bar for black, blue, green, pink, and orange. Now, first of all, you can see the bar for black is only one square across. It's only one square wide. Whereas the, the bars for blue, green, pink, and orange are all two squares wide. So that's one criticism or one reason why this bar chart would be misleading. Another thing that I can see that's wrong with this bar chart is the space in between the bars. They should all be equal. So as you can see here, the space in between black and blue is two squares, whereas the space in between blue and green is one, green and pink is one, and pink and orange actually touch. So the space in between the bars is not consistent. It's not equal. They should all be equal. Okay, and lastly, for this bar chart, another thing that's wrong with it is uh, there's a bar drawn at the wrong height. You've got the bar for black is three in terms of the frequency, yep. The bar for blue is seven, yep. The bar for green has a frequency of four, fantastic. Pink here is in between five and six. It's actually drawn at a height of 5.5, but it should be at six, so the bar actually should be taller. So that's another problem with this bar chart. And the bar for orange, it is the right height of one. But so in terms of this bar chart, three things that are wrong with this are the bars are not equal widths, the space in between the bars are not consistent, and also there's one of the bars drawn at the wrong height. Okay, now I've drawn another bar chart. It's for similar information. Again, colors, black, blue, green, pink, and orange. And we've got our frequencies this time of seven, four, five, six, and three. And here are some other problems with this bar chart. So with this one, one of the problems with this one is that the frequency axis, this vertical axis, it's not labeled. You can see in the one before, I labeled it with frequency for the vertical axis for your bar chart and color for the horizontal one. Whereas here, I didn't label the vertical axis. I just had two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And it doesn't say the word frequency or say how many or anything like that on the side. So there should be a labeling there for that vertical axis. Also, the frequency axis doesn't actually start at zero. It starts at two at the bottom there. If you're doing a bar chart, you really should start at zero at the bottom and work your way up. Now, another thing I've noticed is even though it starts at two, you've got two, and then you've got two squares, then you've got three, and over two, four, and over two, five, and over two, six, and then it just jumps to seven there after one square. So the spacing of those frequencies are wrong as well. So that's three of the things they're talked about there. So it doesn't start at zero. The vertical axis isn't labeled, and also the space in between these numbers on the vertical axis aren't consistent. They should be consistent. If, for instance, if you're going to go up in ones, each of the, the lines should be ones, or you, should, you can even go up in twos and so on, but they should go up in an equal spacing. Um, so we've talked about that one. And also, one of the colors here, blue, hasn't been labeled. There should be a sort of, you've got black, green, pink, and orange. So here the bars are at least the same width as each other, and there's the same space in between them, but this one of blue hasn't been labeled. And that's another problem with this bar chart. So there's some of the, the common mistakes with bar charts. The fact that the bars are not equal widths, the fact that the space in between the bars are not equal, maybe the bars are run at the wrong height, Maybe there's a problem with the vertical axis not starting at zero or the space in between the numbers. It could be one of the axes are, you know, aren't labeled or it could be one of the bars isn't labeled. And there's some other common problems to how bar charts can be misleading. Okay, let's have a look at line graphs. So here we've got a line graph and we've got our year 2017, 18, 19, 2020 and 2021. 
and we've got our share prices of 154 pence, 152 pence, 154, 157 and 156. So here's our line graph and I've drawn it with some intentional mistakes in it. So let's have a look at some of the mistakes or some of the common problems with line graphs. So first of all, we've got our vertical axis and it doesn't start at zero. Now that can be quite misleading. If you look at the height here of 152 and the head here at 157, it looks like there's a massive jump up in this share price. It's gone from all the way down here to all the way up here. But that's because it's starting at 150. If we started at zero, these two points would be actually quite, cl you know, much closer together vertically. So they wouldn't actually be, yeah, it does go up by 5p from 152 to 157, which is great. But it does, it, it's not as sort of as significant as this line graph shows. And sometimes that can be done on purpose if you want to sort of give the impression of this humongous rise. So that's something to watch out for. Now, if you do want to skip out numbers on graphs, sometimes look out for little zigzags um, at the beginning of the vertical axis or the horizontal axis. And I'll show you one of those later. Um, but here, there's no zigzag, so you get the impression starting at zero, but it actually starts at 150, and that can be a reason why it's misleading, where it gives the impression of these massive rises between the points where it might not be as big as it seems. So another problem with this line graph is the vertical axis hasn't been labeled. It should have share price written on it. So another problem with this graph is the points are actually plotted in the wrong place. You've got this point here at the beginning at 2017. It's been plotted at 153, but it should be 154. I can actually see the 2019's actually been left off. So the points are not plotted in the right places. So, so far we've got the vertical axis doesn't start at zero, or there's not a zigzag to at least show that the numbers have been skipped out. The vertical axis has not been labeled and the points are plotted in the wrong place. We've got a number missing in the horizontal axis, that 2019 is missing as well. The spacing on the axes, well, the vertical axis, the spacing looks okay. It actually starts at 150. One, two squares, 151. One, two squares, 152. 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58. So the vertical axis in terms of spacing is fine. Ideally, it would start at zero. But the horizontal axis, we've got one, two, three squares for a year. We've got one, two, three squares, and it should be 2019. It then goes one, two, and then the next year, and then one, two, three. So the spacing isn't consistent for those years going across. And another thing that to watch out for in line graphs is sometimes people draw curves in. If it is a line graph, you should draw straight lines joining your points up. Okay, so our next type of graph. Well, our next type of graph we're going to look at is a pie chart. And first of all, 3D pie charts can be very misleading. The sectors at the front are much more prominent than those at the back. So that can be misleading because you sort of your attention is drawn to those big sectors at the front, whereas the ones at the back seem much smaller. So that's a reason why 3D pie charts are misleading. So another way in which a pie chart can be misleading is one of the sectors might not be labelled. Here they are all labelled with bus, cycle, car and walk, but one of the sectors might not be labelled. Another problem with pie charts can be maybe one of the angles is drawn incorrectly. So it might be the angle in the sectors wrong. So instead of being 100 degrees, they've drawn 110 degrees or something like that. Or also another problem with a pie chart can be one of the angles has been calculated incorrectly. So the pie chart's wrong because the angle's wrong. Okay, and finally, let's have a look at scatter graphs. So here we've got a scatter graph, and this scatter graph shows arm span in centimeters. So it goes, you've got our zigzag, so it shows that it's skipping out some of the numbers, and it goes 100, 110, 120, 130, and so on. And we've got our height, and it goes from 100, it's got the zigzag again, which shows that some of the numbers have been skipped out, and that's fine with a scatter graph, and it goes 110, 120, and so on. And we've drawn our points here, uh, we've plotted our points, and we've got our line of best fit. Now, some of the problems with scatter graphs might be that the points could be plotted in the wrong place. So some of these points might be in the wrong place. That's something worthwhile checking if you've got the points there to check with. And also another problem might be that the axes are drawn incorrectly. So again, looking out for those scales. So here we've got 100, 110, 120, 130, 140, 150, 160, 170, 180, 190. So that seems okay in terms of the vertical axis. And the horizontal axis again, 110, 120, 130, 140, 150, 160. Yep, the horizontal axis is perfect as well on this scatter graph, but it's something to watch out for. So making sure that the scale's right, that the labels are correct. So making sure they're suitable. So in other words, here we're going up in tens, which is grand in terms of arm span, in terms of centimeters, but it wouldn't make sense to go 100 centimeters, 200, 300, 400, because all the points would be really closely packed together. So having a suitable axis, so having a suitable scale for your axis. And finally, with scatter graphs, another thing to watch out for is that a line of best fit is drawn in a suitable location. So for instance, if I had a line of best fit like this, I would say that's not really a great line of best fit. Loads of points are you know, to the right, there's only a couple to the left. 
Um, the lines are actually very close to some of the points, whereas I would say, and even this one here, this red line, I best fit, I would say is not on a great location because you've got lots of points beneath the line, only one, maybe two above it, and it's not close to some of these ones. I think a slightly better line of best fit could be drawn, maybe something like that perhaps um so that's things to watch out for that line of best fit is in a suitable location for positive correlation some students sometimes think that the line of best fit has to start in this bottom left hand corner whether it's the origin or in this case this point here uh, but it doesn't always have to start in that bottom corner it can be anywhere on the graph you want as long as it's drawn that it's pretty you know it's pretty close to the points it's going through as many as possible or really close to them and it you know you can just tell by looking at it whether the line of best fit is a suitable one or not and that's it